Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, this morning's video is another weekend review of my current gaming activities. So these basically cover uh, between 7 and 10 days worth of uh, my activities and uh, I'll, I will talk about a number of them, not all reflected in the image that you see here. So, um, and, and not in the order in which they occurred. So as you may know, if you've been following my channel um, for these past seven to 10 days or so, uh, I backed the Kickstarter of uh, Shadow Dark and I've done several videos, uh, you know, working, like going through it and explaining the game as I understand it and looking at the free uh, quick start rules that you can get from drive through RPG. So you can link through my uh, affiliate link on, uh, on any of my videos and go right there and then just request to, you know, just look up Shadow Dark and it'll come up and you'll find it's free there. I recommend you downloading them and, you know, taking a look at it and seeing if it's the kind of game that you would be interested in backing. Um it's really taking, you know, taking the tabletop role-playing industry by for, uh, by storm. Um, and uh, I don't, um, I don't think that's too much hyperbole. Um, it's, you know, it's really firing up. It's, it's certainly going to break a million dollars, uh, in Kickstarter. And I, I think that it's, um, Primarily, it's timing. The fact that um, that Kelsey Dion was was prepared to launch a Kickstarter um, because she had been working on the game system now for several years, according to her, and it was just ready. It was ready to go right after the OGL fiasco of uh, you know Wizards of the Coast and and their. Um, their poor timing in, and and their poor planning and what they were looking to do with the OGL uh, 1.1 really did give the um, really did did give her and this game the uh, momentum that it needed uh, because it sent a lot of people looking for alternatives to Wizards of the Coast uh, fifth edition or sixth edition whatever you want to you know, point as their, their primary product. And, uh, I, I will talk a little bit later in the week about, um, what their primary product might actually be, uh, because that seems to be something that's evolving as well. Um, so great timing, um, you know, fortunate timing for her and the game system actually does, uh, does look fairly good. I'm, I'm looking to play test it myself. Um, if you saw my last video, you could see that I'm trying to figure out a, uh, a character sheet that works best for it on, uh, on drive through RPG. And, and I have not yet been successful. I had to make some several tweaks to what I did in, um, in the video two days ago, and it's still not working out real well. So hopefully, and I went on their discord server, uh, the, the Shadow Dark Discord server, and and I inquired about it. I was like, you know, you really do need a a roll twenty um, character sheet up there so that we can actually play test this thing, and hopefully that comes sooner rather than later. So before the end of the Kickstarter, because I think that um, if they have the kind of tool available, and I know they're saying, "Oh, go to Forge or you know, go to a Foundry." I mean, go to Foundry or uh, maybe there's there's something on Fantasy. I doubt that there's a player character sheet on Foundry already. So um, so backed it, read through it, looked to play test it. Still looking to play test it. Uh, so that was a good portion of my week and a good portion of my video over these last seven to ten days. Received in the mail the other day. Uh, two things, and again, not not going generally in order, but uh, I have 
finally got received my index RPG uh, index card RPG master edition. So now it's off the cover. So and I, I, I always like to do reviews when I have everything in my hands. Um, even though I started with just the PDFs and Viking Death Squad, which which actually looking at it now looks like it's it's a um, it's an expansion or a supplement to this game system. It's a standalone, or at least I believe it has the rules that it can be a standalone. But I look at more as a um, just like an elevated version of, uh, or maybe a hard, more hardcore version of Index Card RPG. Again, haven't dug into it yet. Um, been waiting to just do character creation for Index Card RPG, which uh, the Master Edition, which is coming up very, very soon. Uh, that might even be the next video I go to um, before I, I string together a couple others. I like to mix things up on my channel as well. Getting back over to here, um, I'm going to talk last <coughs> about my uh, the Keepers of Quescaton campaign. Uh, we are in a week session, uh, weekly session number 82. Uh, so I'm going to save that for last. I wanted to talk about some other things that I've also received uh, in the mail that I'm I'm really excited about. I've also received. Um, I purchased this from the Robert J. Coons estate, and that's uh, the game that changed everything. And so I'm going to begin reading through this. And, and this is basically an early history of Dungeons and Dragons as not just written by Robert J. Coons, but experienced by him. He was literally there. All right. So he was there at the time. And so... Uh, whereas maybe some of these other historical books that, you know, full novels that are out there, um, in many cases, they're talking secondhand. Uh, here, Robert Kuntz is talking firsthand. I mean, he was literally at the table when these things were coming together. So really anxious on uh, reading through this. And uh, this I also picked up, I, I got it along with a poster, which as soon as I can... As soon as I can put this up. So this is the Red Book premiere. And this is a, you know, a full-size poster. So there you have it. Gary Gygax and uh, Dave Arneson. And celebrating the RPG Golden Age. And, um, and, and, and that quite possibly is the Golden Age of tabletop role-playing games. Is, is basically from, you know, the the mid seventies through, you know, I'd argue through the late eighties. And then, you know, it kind of waned at that point. And uh, even though D and D continued through the nineties, I think around 2000, there was another boom where you, um, where the OSR really took, took shape. Um, and, and role playing started to become much more, uh, uh, much more popular. And then it waned again and uh, picked up again during the pandemic and, you know, big focus on it again. But now it seems to be branching out again. So it's not just Wizards of the Coast and, and Dungeons and Dragons, but it's moving in other directions as well, which is great for the hobby. It's, it's always best for the hobby not to get uh, tied too much to one, uh, to one company or one game system. Uh, you should always look to expand your experience in uh, in gaming, and uh, that's something that Gary Gygax, you know, really, really pushed in his books, and uh, you know, and it's something just through experience uh, is important if you are looking to make this a lifelong hobby and try to get the most out of it that you can. So let me get back to here. Uh, some other things I've been doing some prep for <clears throat> my uh, my game convention, my next upcoming game convention that I am attending. So I picked up uh, some items that I wanted uh, for that. So I, I was able to find, and I will link if you request it, um, I will link the website where I got these from. But there were um, 
I saw a set of dice. So it was a set of dice, and, and here they are. Um, a set of seven dice for uh, for 29 cents. I was like, holy cow, all right? Even if I just order one set, that'll be great. And then there was a there was a discounted amount on the others. And since I'm running two games at Rising Phoenix Con in April uh, in Milton, Massachusetts, I I said, you know what? It would be a pretty cool thing, and at only two dollars a pop or whatever, I am going to um, I'm going to purchase a, a set of dice uh, for every one of the players that sits at my table. So. I got all 11 sets, including shipping and handling for 24 bucks. So there's the, there's the individual sets. I got 10 of these. They're nice in a packet. Mine's a little bit different, a little bit different color. Uh, but these here, I was like, Hey, great. They're a nice, uh, you know, maroon and gold color to them. And, uh, something just nice to give to the players at my table along with the original adventures that, that I had written uh, that I'm going to be running. And so they're going to get, uh, at the one game, both of those things. So I've got a set of dice and a uh, my original adventure. And then uh, at the other table, I'm running uh, Blade Runner, and uh, they'll get a set of dice along with that. I also actually invested in um, in some business cards for unscripted and unchained RPG review that I intend to bring out to uh, the convention as well and hand it out to vendors and and other players that I come into contact with and, and the DMs that I'm in other players at the tables that I'm sitting at. So um, that was like a $40 investment for, it was either 100 cards or, yeah, I think it was about 100 cards, so about 40 cents a card. And I was like, hey, cool, you know, that's not too bad. And uh, Picked up a little $5 case uh, to put them in so uh, I could walk around with 25 cards at a time and uh, and hand those out as I go through all three days of gaming, which I'm really fully booked, except for Sunday, uh, fully booked uh, starting Friday morning, first thing and going through. Uh, now, let's get to the more expansive portion of this video. And... I'm going to be talking about my uh, my AD and D first edition campaign, and I'm going to go to Discord here and share Discord with you. So I do have a Discord channel. So the Discord channel is unscripted and unchained, and um, <clears throat> you can obviously uh, link through and go straight to here. Um, don't have a whole lot of people here, you know, a couple hundred. Uh, so it's always best to have, you know, more obviously to get more interaction. So I'm looking forward to that. And so here is my AD&D Greyhawk campaign. And this, I will expand this and <clears throat> we'll be able to see where the characters are currently at. All of this paperwork, all of this, uh, you know, these ledgers of our adventures is thanks to uh, Amalric Blaine. Um, uh, Blaine is the person's name. Amalric is his character. Uh, Amalric is a gray elf. Uh, he is currently fighter level seven, magic user level seven. And um, and he, he just leveled up. So um, both classes. So he's ready to go. We have uh, Mirador, who is a cleric. He's a human cleric. He is now level eight. We have, he has a second character um, that's kind of a, a fallback on. Vince is, uh, he plays uh, Crandon. He is a stout halfling. He is a level nine thief now. <coughs> so I've been holding pretty true to their, um, been holding pretty true to AD&D First Edition's uh, requirements for paying for training, but I told them that is up until level nine, and thereafter, after level nine, they can um, they can basically train themselves, uh, and um, and in in some cases, some of them actually have mentees that they can train and gain um, gold from doing that as well. 
So you can see here we have Crandon, he's level nine. Uh, Andrew, who plays empty, uh, who is empty inside, Breeze. So he is our half elf. Uh, he is a cleric. And he is now level eight. Yes, he is now level eight. And you can see here the totals and everything that they've gone through. And um, I, I give out, I give out different types of experience. So they get uh, they get experience from treasure, they get experience from um, from combat, they get experience from role playing, and they get experience from session. And so the combination of those uh, four types of experiences, uh, they the earliest players in this group, uh, which is about eight of them, uh, they are, I'm sorry, not eight, uh, about five of them of the eight uh, have been here the entire 82 sessions. Uh, the other three came on uh, in week four. So they've still been here for like 78 sessions. So it is a really um, tight knit group of players uh, that have been working together really well. Uh, so we have Kelly. So this is uh, Kelly Foote, uh, formerly of TSR and uh, old TSR. I should, uh, he plays uh, Angus Blackthorn. He's a human. He is a fighter, thief, uh, seventh, seventh. He actually hit, just hit seventh level for thief. So he is going to become a bard level one, you know, at this point. That was his... You know, he's the only player that I allowed to uh, be a bard. And and basically, normally I don't allow bards, but, uh, you know, I have Kelly Foote, the former, you know, former TSR uh, writer from 1982 to 1986 asking me if he can, uh, if he can play a character of his choice. And so I, I certainly uh, deferred. To his experience uh, with the, you know, with the game, in order to do that, so uh, he will be a first level bard by the next time that we play. Uh, Alan is our uh, paladin. Uh, he is now eighth level. Uh, so you can see he's uh, he had basically gotten a whole level from one kill from a basically a function of the deck of many things and so that's uh that's how he's eighth level already with uh so many more experience points uh technically than everybody else uh then we have uh leah the only female in the group and uh she's uh the only one playing a female character as well so she plays sparrow she is our half elf druid she is level 10 um I mean, she has had some of the most... Uh, I'm trying to figure out which characters have had to make more um, more system shock checks. Uh, total, the party has had to make 17 system shock that, um, checks, uh, otherwise die. And, um, and so in 82 sessions... Uh, there have been 17 occasions where one of these PCs uh, could have, uh, you know, could have died and had to have been replaced. Uh, and, and I'll get to one of the other things that uh, we're, we're debating with their next, uh, their next phase of their adventuring. And then finally, Shadow and Sun, uh, who has a great channel out there. So definitely check out um, Shadow's, uh, Shadow and Sun's channel on youtube he plays zane our human magic user so he's been with us now for the least amount of time but still um uh, my gosh almost like six months i think uh he's been with us so uh he's been playing really really well and um you know fit into the fit into the group you know extremely well so i'm excited about that oh i could have expanded that so let me see how i come out of this without closing everything yes that's what i wanted to do um so they're they're posed now with a with a decision to make i'll switch here so 
Amalric, our our elven magic user fighter, had um, had a critical hit uh, scored again, you know, on him, and he ended up losing four fingers on his left hand, so his shield hand, and um, he doesn't have access to the spell. Uh, to, um, you know, either a restoration spell or a limited wish or anything like that. So he needs to find himself a 16th level cleric or um, those spells uh, on scrolls in order to, to cast. And since the highest level cleric in the group is, is only a level, you know, eight or nine, um, they do have a, a significant chance of uh, failing uh, casting that spell. So he's looking to acquire like three or four scrolls or a 16th level um, cleric in order to cast that spell. Uh, I believe it's a, it's a seventh level spell. So they'll either have to travel most likely to the capital city of Yomenri, uh, which will take them about two weeks or, you know, possibly even longer. Uh, plus they wanted to spend some time um, training, obviously two weeks to train because a Malric needed two weeks to train because he was leveling up both his fighter and his magic user up to level seven apiece. And, um, and Kelly is looking to level up his character to seventh level thief and then to first level bard. So, um, so they both need two weeks time total in order to, um, in order to level up. And that would then extend their, um, their travel and their in between times between adventures, um, you know, by almost a month. And then if they had to return back to this area, really about six weeks time. And they have a dilemma because they had had a, um, they had this orc that they, um, that they at first charmed and then they put on a change alignment, uh, a helm of, of alignment change on the orc. And the orc had been traveling with them since uh the caves of chaos back in like week uh i want to say it was like week eight or so so this orc has been traveling with them for a better part of a, a year in game time and and their servant their um you know their um the driver for their cart so their drover uh, basically assisted uh, on occasion he's gone into combat with them and they've had to save him a, a few times as well um, and uh, they've given him magic items and such and when they returned from their latest adventure which I, I didn't mention and I still haven't told them yet but officially the adventure that they were running um, or that they just completed was the Dark Druid by Robert J. Kuhn. So uh, it just so happened to be that the focus of this campaign from the very, very beginning uh, had been about this, this dark, dark Druid covenant, a, a, a uh, or enclave of Druids that uh, basically followed like a neutral evil path and looking to wipe out all... Um, all non-humans in Yomenri uh, because they're they're partially corrupted uh, and following um, Waystri, the Greyhawk deity of um, the self-deception and bigotry and you know and such. So they're they're following this evil demigod and um, still staying true to neutrality in the sense of being neutral evil. And uh, they've taken these two concepts through the self-deception. And um, so they, they have self-deceived themselves in believing that they are still true druids. And when I was looking for this next phase of their adventuring, um, 
you know, I just did a Google search. I was like, you know, you know, known evil druids uh, in D&D &D and, and just looking around. And then all of a sudden I, I got this, you know, you know, the dark druid uh, adventure that uh, Robert Kuntz wrote, I believe um, it's written for AD&D &D, uh, first edition. Uh, and it might have been written in the, I have to double check and, and look at it, but it might have been written in the um, late 1990s. Uh, so anyway, so it really fit into the campaign well. And uh, it was an extremely challenging uh, adventure. They, they've been running through it now for probably about six to eight weeks, so almost about two months. Uh, we've been running through... Uh, you know, this particular adventure module. Now, when I run adventure modules, I highly, highly modify them. Uh, so it's basically just I pull certain themes from it, use the maps from them, uh, but the story ends up matching and fitting within their overall campaign. So they have some dilemmas here, right? They, they're they trying to bring a stop to the Dark Druids and their, their ultimate plans, Um they're, they just lost control uh, because someone, unbeknownst to them, someone had removed, um, by removing the curse on the, uh, on the helm of alignment change, removed the helmet from their orc servant and their orc servant, you know, killed a couple people in the towns that, in the town that they were staying at and had run off into the wilderness. So they're like, well, we got this, you know, this loose end that we weren't anticipating and do we let do we let that occur before we train do we train first then go take care of that do we go get Amalric's fingers put back on on the other side of the country um and then come back to take care of that so you know and they know that the, the nature of this campaign is that um inaction leads to different consequences and sometimes or, or usually there'll be negative consequences so they they kind of have a dilemma here and i'm really looking forward to see how they look to resolve it and that will then inform me how i'm going to go about um you know leading them in whatever direction they ultimately choose and and seeing what those consequences actually were it's, it is a very fluid kind of um interpretation i'll say it's a it's my interpretation of the consequences of their actions in the moment and so um and then i have some other ideas of, of some other things that might also um branch off from either of those two main choices that they take that um might lead to you know, even even more expansive adventuring that are side quests, uh, let's say, um, and then possibly loosely connected to their overall campaign goal of, of being counter to these dark druids. So really looking forward to it. Uh, that'll be Tuesday night that we run through it. And, uh, you know, and I, I know some of the players were asking me, so what's going to happen? Like they were asking this prior to Tuesday. So, you know, what direction are we going in? And I was like, I, I honestly don't know because we're not together right now. So as soon as we come together, then uh, we'll we'll see what happens. And and that's basically how I've been running my game is, uh, you know, waiting to hear what the player characters are looking to do and then just, you know, just connecting it to any of the ideas that I already had uh swirling around in my head and and so far it's been working pretty well so my prep time is is not tremendous when it comes to uh getting ready for these sessions and and it's only been a, on a rare occasion where it's like oh crap i really don't know what to do and we spend a session just traveling someplace and dealing with random encounters um, that are sometimes lead to other stories or other times they're just random encounters and you're, you know, we just deal with it and, and get them into a new site. And that gives me another whole week to start thinking about, well, what's going to happen now from this place. So 
all of my gaming activities this past week have been, you know, really fulfilling uh, for me as a dungeon master. Uh, learning about a new game system, digging deeper into index card RPG, um, running my campaign, you know, with my uh, with my group of players, and uh, and then preparing for a uh, in-person game convention six weeks from now uh so it's been a busy week it's been a very fulfilling week and uh i'm just looking forward to uh kicking off tuesday with another great game session which i you know always anticipate we're going to have a great game session and uh do some reading into this here uh so the game that changed everything and you'll see some videos uh, these next couple of days, dealing with index card RPG, maybe another Shadow Dark, uh, definitely one uh, from uh, the game that changed everything from Robert J. Koontz, and whatever else comes up uh, during the week uh, as far as gaming news and that kind of thing as well. So, without further ado, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen uh, sometime soon. If you are going to Rise in Phoenix uh, Con in uh, in April, uh, so that's in Milton, Massachusetts, please drop a line in the uh, in the comment section there that you're actually attending. Love to meet any of the you know people that are subscribed to the channel, uh, or if you're going and you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, love to either run a game with you. I'm also prepared to run some, uh, you know, some open table games as well. I'm going to bring a couple extra games with me that um, we can we can sit down and, and and throw together some impromptu games as well. So, all of that being said, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for joining, and uh, as always, remember to like, subscribe, and share uh, these videos out there and. Uh, Discord channel. Uh, there's links to the Discord channel and to Twitter and all of those other things as well. So uh, be sure to, you know, drop a line into the Discord in particular, because that's the best way for you to uh, actually get involved in some of my gaming more directly. So have a great afternoon. Take care.